Vim, the only editor to also double up as an escape room, is a highly configurable text editor that focuses on efficiency and performance. Out of the box, however, Vim is pretty underwhelming. Despite having one of the best set of key bindings for any software, it's lacking many modern features found in other editors. Well, let's rectify that. With one command, we'll turn the standard Vim setup into this, a full-featured IDE. But before we can use our magic command, we need to get our environment set up. The first thing to actually do is install NeoVim. Ah, yeah, I forgot to mention. We're going to use a more modern Vim to achieve our IDE status. Don't worry, they're pretty similar. NeoVim is actually a fork of Vim and provides features we're going to need. I use Arch, by the way, so I'm going to install using Pac-Man. For other operating systems, check out NeoVim's website for instructions. Once installed, you're probably going to want to alias the vim command to load NeoVim instead, which will save you from your own muscle memory. You may also want to add this alias to your shell startup script as well, so that it persists across sessions. You're also going to want to have a nerd font installed and set up as your terminal font. I'm using JetBrains mono nerd font personally, but whichever one you fancy will work. And finally, you just need to ensure that you have git installed. Now, you may be thinking that there only being one command is a bit of a stretch, but just bear with me. Here is the one command I was referencing to get set up. Before I share it, you'll probably want to make some configuration changes later on, so make sure to finish this video to figure out how to actually customize your new Vim configuration. What we're going to install is called nvchad, which is a set of NeoVim Lua configuration files that will give us a lot of IDE goodness for free. To install it, you just have to run one of the following commands depending on your operating system. These commands will clone the nvchad repo into your NeoVim configuration directory. So first make sure to back up any existing configuration you already have. You may also want to delete your local NeoVim cache as well to prevent any issues. After that, you can then run our single command and clone a copy of nvchad. Once the clone is completed, let's go ahead and open up NeoVim. You'll be prompted to install the example configuration. Go ahead and type in n as in no. This will ensure you're working from the same starting point as I am. After that, you should see a window in which all of the default packages are being installed. Once that's done, we can explore some of the functionality of our new IDE. The first thing you're going to want to do is probably change the theme. NVChad supports a custom theme switcher internally, so you're able to choose the theme you want. You can bring this up by typing space, T and H in that order. With the theme switcher up, you can navigate up and down using Ctrl N or Ctrl P, which stands for next or previous. Or you just type in the name of the theme that you're looking for. Personally, I use Capuchin because it's the best color scheme ever, so I'm just going to go ahead and set that up. Now that we have our theme set up, we're going to want to apply it to our programming languages. NeoVim ships with TreeSitter installed, which allows us to easily set up syntax highlighting for many languages. To install syntax for a new language, we just need to call the ts install command from the vin command line using the colon key. We can also check which syntaxes we have installed using the ts install info command. TreeSitter is great, but it doesn't have syntax highlighting for every language. Fortunately, there's a way we can achieve this using other Vim plugins, but I'll talk about that later on in the video when we look at customization. Modern editors typically provide a file tree for visually navigating a project. NVChad is no different and provides one through a package called nvim tree. To open it, you just need to press Ctrl and N. We then have a working tree we can use to navigate our project with. To open a file is as easy as selecting the file and pressing Enter. Sometimes in a larger project, it's good to mark a file by actually pressing the M key. This will allow you to easily find it when you're scrolling through later on. As well as browsing and opening files, we can also perform write actions on our file system. We can create a new file by pressing the A key and typing in the new file name. We can also copy files using the C and then P key, and can rename files using the R key. Whilst having a file tree is great for visual navigation, it's not the most efficient way to jump around a code base. If we know the file we want to open, we can just jump straight to it. To do so, you can open up the Find Files menu using space, F and F. This will open up a new window, which we can then use to search for files in our project. By the way, the space key is the leader key in nvchab and is used to initialize a lot of commands. As well as searching across all of the files in our project, we can also perform a search across only the files we've already opened. To do this, we use the space F and B command to open up a window that is constrained to show only our open buffers. At this stage, you may be concerned that there are a lot of new key bindings to remember in order to make the full use of our new IDE. Fortunately, nvchad ships with a cheat sheet feature which we can use to quickly reference key commands. The command to pull up the cheat sheet is space C and H, which brings up a new window we can then navigate through. 
To close the cheat sheet is the same command again. Additionally, NVChad also provides a feature to help suggest key combinations. If we press the leader key, aka the space key, and wait for a second, a window appears which will suggest other commands to follow with and what those commands will do. Both of these features can help to get the most out of our new IDE. NVChad has some simple key bindings for navigating our windows. To move around, you just need to press Ctrl and then one of the navigation keys, either H, J, K, or L. To see this in action, you can open up new panes in Vim using the VSP or SP commands, which stand for vertical split or split, and then use the subsequent keys to move about. Additionally, NVChad comes with the ability to toggle absolute and relative line numbers for use with Vim. We can toggle line numbers using space followed by N or relative line numbers by using space R and N. One thing that can be difficult to navigate in Vim is open buffers. Fortunately, we know we can navigate using the find buffer window we saw before, but NVChad also provides a tab bar similar to other IDEs. This bar will show any buffers that we have open, as well as any Vim tabs. To cycle through our buffers from left to right, we can use the tab key or use the shift tab key to cycle in reverse. If we have too many buffers open, we can close our active buffer by using the space and X key combination. Modern editors typically allow access to a terminal session to enable the user to run command line tools. NVChat is no different and provides key bindings to access the NeoVim shell. Opening up a command line shell can be achieved by pressing the space key followed by H for a horizontal window or space followed by V for a vertical window. This gives access to a full featured shell in order to perform command line operations. NVChat provides a lot out of the box, but there are some custom configurations you'll likely want to do in order to get set up. Fortunately, NVChad provides a mechanism to customize pretty easily. One thing to note is that all of the configuration is in Lua. Personally, I find this easier than Vim script, but it wouldn't hurt to run through a quick Lua tutorial to get acquainted. To add customizations, we need to add our custom configuration to one of the two files in our custom directory, either the chadrc.lua file or the init.lua file. Each one has its specific use case. The chadrc.lua file is used for overriding the default config Lua table of NVChad whilst the init.lua file is used for overriding NeoVim options and commands. Basically, whenever you want to make changes to plugins or NVChat options, then use the chadrc.lua file. If you want to make changes to the typical NeoVim or Vim configurations, use the init.lua file instead. Now that we know where to place customization code, let's go ahead and make our first change. I mentioned earlier that TreeSitter doesn't support every language. A good example of this is Crystal. Fortunately, there is a Vim plugin on GitHub that we can use. First, we'll need to open up our chatrc.lua file. You'll notice that our theme has also been set here as well. The documentation recommends to group all plugins into their own configuration file called plugins.lua. Let's go ahead and reference that new file in the plugins key of our table. Next, we can create our new file in our custom folder. After creating the file, let's open it up and return an empty Lua table inside. Now we can add our plugin as a value in the Lua table. We'll also need to specify the file type that we want the plugin to load for as well. This is because NVChad uses the lazy plugin manager internally, which will lazy load plugins to improve startup performance. To specify the file type, we just set the FT key to crystal. Additionally, we can also disable lazy loading for a plugin by setting the lazy key to false, but this should be avoided if possible. To then install the plugin, we would normally just call lazy sync in the Vim command line. But as this is our first plugin, we'll need to close Vim and reopen it again. Now we should see the lazy package manager window and the crystal plugin install. If we then open up a crystal file, we can see that syntax highlighting is working. Neat. In addition to installing plugins, we may also wish to configure them to enable certain features. We can add any plugin configuration to our plugins.lua file. Here, we're going to enable the auto formatting of crystal code in our plugin. We can do this by adding in a config function which will set our Vim configuration when the plugin is loaded. For autocomplete, we just need to set the value of our crystal auto format to 1. When we save this file, we should see Lazy automatically reconfigure. Once the reconfigure is complete, we can open up our crystal file again and see the auto formatting take place when we save. As I mentioned before, we can also set standard Vim configuration in our init.lua file. I prefer to keep my lines less than 80 characters long, so I'm going to add this into my configuration. And here, you can see it works perfectly. The final piece that we'll want to configure is LSP, which stands for Language Server Protocol. LSP is basically a protocol that enables editors to receive code completion and other tooling using language servers. 
NeoVim comes with this out of the box and MVChat provides some configuration we can use to manage LSP plugins. Let's go ahead and add in an LSP config for Rust Analyzer. First, we'll need to add in an override for our LSP config package configuration. To do that, let's open up our customs slash plugins Lua and add in a new entry for NeoVim slash NVim LSP config. Then we'll add a config function block, which will require the default LSP config and a custom LSP config file that we're about to create. Next, let's create our custom LSP config at custom slash configs slash LSP config dot Lua. Now we need to import the onAttach and capabilities methods from the main LSP config to use in our setup functions. We also want to import the LSP config package. Now we'll add in an entry to the LSP config for Rust Analyzer. We'll also pass in the onAttach and capability variables. Finally, we'll set the file type that we're interested in and where the language server should consider as the project root for our Rust projects. If you want to add in other LSP server configurations, you can reference the NeoVim LSP config server configurations guide on GitHub or type in colon help LSP config dash all on the Vim command line. With our NeoVim configuration set up, next we want to make sure we have Rust Analyzer installed on our system. You can do this using RustUp, which is typically my preferred method. Or you can use the Mason plugin provided by NVChad to manage LSP binaries for you. To use Mason is as simple as adding an entry to our custom config to override the default config. And then to add our LSP server to the ensure installed block. Then we can use the Mason install all command to download and install the language server. And with that, we have a working LSP server for co-completion with Rust. NVChat has been my go-to NeoVim configuration for just over a year now, and it's been a real pleasure to use as my daily driver. I hope this video inspired you to give it a try as your own NeoVim configuration. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.